Gender, a social construct that has permeated human culture for millions of years. Gender has been conditioned to dictate what we wear, what we look like, what jobs we have, who we socialize with, where we go to the bathroom, the list goes on. Gender is clearly a significant part of life as a human being. But how is gender learned, and when does it start? By 18 months, humans are able to label things like items and people based on gender. Gender is initially formally learned in the preschool years, along with ideas of how different genders should think, feel, and behave. This in turn teaches children how they should behave according to their specific gender. From this early age, children are socialized to comprehend what is expected of women and men in society. This learning only continues as we grow older. Several theories help to explain how these gender ideas are formed at young ages. Developed by psychologist Albert Bandura, social learning theory describes the idea that behavior is a result of observing and emulating the environment around oneself. Specifically for gender type behavior, this results from observing the gender representations in an environment. Children learn what it means to be male and female through the world around them and mirror the messages seen. By viewing one's surroundings, children internalize the messages in their environment and incorporate them into their behaviors. Cultivation theory, developed by journalist and professor of communication George Gerbner, describes the idea that heavy exposure to media can cultivate the viewer's perception of reality. The more a person, or more specifically a child, consumes media, the more likely they are to adopt the ideas and values portrayed in that media. In line with this theory, and in terms of learning gender, the portrayal of gender stereotypes in the media cause viewers to accept them and view them as natural. With these two theories in mind, the environment and media that children are exposed to the most is television. Television is reported to be the most widely used form of media among children, with school-aged children watching approximately 28 hours of television a week. So it makes sense that exposure to the ideas in television, specifically messages about gender, have direct influences on children. But these messages have not been found to be accurate. Gender stereotypes have been prominent in children's television for years. In fact, they've probably been a part of children's shows long before you were born. Oh, I shouldn't have upset George, but if he only knew how I hate washing, ironing, vacuuming... There ought to be some higher authority a girl could appeal to. Research dating back to the 70s finds that gender stereotypes are prevalent in children's shows. Past and present research also finds that male characters in these shows are more frequently aggressive. That's it. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Brave. Where are you going? Thought I'd step outside. Get ready! Athletic. Leaders. Wily Cat, Kit, stop playing with your food. We'll eat after we unload the heavy gear. And comedic. No wonder we're lost. You've been reading the map upside down. Over their female counterparts. Female characters, on the other hand, have been found to be more emotional. What do I do? Affectionate. Darling, you're home at last. You lie down and rest while I fix you a few dinosaur steak sandwiches. Have a greater concern over their appearance. And receive more comments about their appearance than male characters. Besides, you look fine to me. (gasps) An overwhelming amount of research has also consistently shown that there are significantly more male characters than female characters in children's television. And significantly more males with lead roles than there are female characters with lead roles. Change over time has also been recorded. While some sources say there is no significant change in stereotypical portrayals over time, other sources found that female characters were found to be less emotional, affectionate, sensitive, and helpless over time, while male characters became more aggressive and had more of a leadership role over time. While some representation has improved, like research finding that female characters are beginning to exhibit masculine traits, Changes still need to be made, as research also finds that male characters are not yet exhibiting feminine traits. But why is this so important? Why should we care? Well, in line with the theories discussed earlier, these representations can have real effects on child viewers. 
The abundance of male characters can contribute to children's understanding of the importance of men and women. If there are repeatedly less female characters in the shows they watch, children may begin to view women as less important. And in terms of gender stereotypes, viewing these representations can lead children to view them as true. Children may believe that all women are emotional or all men are aggressive. The association of a trait with exclusively one gender communicates ideas of how each gender is supposed to act, which in turn can harm children's perceptions of gender and gender roles. A positive relationship between viewing television and endorsing gender stereotypes has already been found, and adolescents who view gender stereotypes in shows are more likely to endorse these stereotypes and exhibit these gender stereotypical behaviors. As this representation is having a direct influence on children, it is crucial to understand the current state of gender representation in children's television. Therefore, I conducted a study exploring the gender representation in modern children's television and the change in representation over time, specifically representation in 2019 television and the change from 2015 to 2019 representation. Based on previous literature, it was hypothesized that there would be significantly more male characters than female characters, that gender stereotypes would be prevalent throughout the children's shows, and that there would be less gender stereotypical portrayals over time. To explore the existence of different themes and concepts, specifically in terms of gender representation, a content analysis was performed. More specifically, a directed content analysis was performed as a pre-formed coding sheet and list of operational definitions was used to analyze the shows. Shows were gathered from the three most viewed children's networks, Disney Channel, Nickelodeon, and Cartoon Network, as these shows reach the most viewers and therefore have the most influence. This study focused on scripted and reoccurring shows lasting over five minutes, which had seasons airing in both 2015 and 2019. The shows analyzed were Miraculous, Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir, SpongeBob SquarePants, Henry Danger, Alvin and the Chipmunks, The Amazing World of Gumball, We Bear Bears, Ninjago, Masters of Spinjitzu, and Teen Titans Go! From these shows, a random number generator was used to generate which episodes would be analyzed from their 2015 and 2019 seasons, to ensure that there was no bias. For the sake of time and feasibility, two episodes were chosen from each year to be analyzed, making for a total of four episodes from each show analyzed. In total, 32 episodes of children's television were coded and analyzed. Characters were coded for their gender, role in the story, and behaviors. This research specifically focused on male and female characters, omitting non-binary and transgendered characters from the study as there were few to no characters who identified as such. A coding and definition sheet from previous literature containing commonly observed gender stereotypes and characteristics in children's television was used to code the episodes. The characteristics were as follows. Affectionate, aggressive, athletic, authority role or leader, brave, comic role, domestic role, emotional, focus on appearance, and receive comments on appearance. As coding progressed, the characteristic of intelligence was frequently seen. Therefore, this characteristic was added to the overall coding sheet. This coding sheet allowed me to identify the representation across genders and quantify it. After the episodes were coded, the data was compiled into a master data sheet. The frequency of each behavior for males and females were counted for 2015 and 2019, as well as the number of male and female lead and supporting roles. With this data, statistical tests were run in order to analyze the results, specifically a chi-squared test of independence. A chi-squared test of independence determines if there is a significant relationship between two variables. In this study, the tests were performed to determine the relationship between gender and characteristic, gender and role in the story, and characteristic and year. For this relationship, I wanted to examine if the year affected the increase or decrease in a certain characteristic. There was relatively no change in terms of amount of male and female characters over time. In both 2015 and 2019, there were significantly more male characters, more male leads, and more male supporting roles, showing that barely any change occurred. Over time, male characters had a significant decrease in having an authority role. As well as significant increases in the affectionate. Clear as a musical note and as sincere as a melody. You're the music that's been playing inside my head since the first day we met and emotional characteristics. The relationship between these characteristics and the year was found to be significant. 
This represents that over time, male characters have begun to take on stereotypically feminine traits and are beginning to lose certain male stereotypes like being an authority figure. However, male characters also had an increase in aggression, indicating that certain male stereotypes are still being perpetuated over time and actually increasing. This finding is consistent with previous studies. As a result of the mixed increases and decreases of stereotypical characteristics, hypothesis 3 cannot be supported. For female characters, there was a significant increase in the brave characteristic I can't let you do the silence, sir. over time, with the relationship between the characteristic and the year being significant. An increase in the athletic characteristic was also found. This means that over time, female characters took on more male stereotypical characteristics. This finding is common in previous content analyses. Female characters also saw a decrease in domestic role portrayals and receiving comments on appearance, although they were not found to be significant. Even so, the decrease in commonly portrayed stereotypes suggests an effort to undo these particular stereotypes. Focusing on 2019 shows alone, there were significantly more male characters than female characters, which confirmed hypothesis one. Overall, more male stereotypes were perpetuated by 2019 children's shows. Male characters were more frequently and more likely to be aggressive, have an authority role, and serve as a comic role. In the story, the presence of these male stereotypes is consistent with previous research. The presence of these stereotypes also supports hypothesis too. Male characters were also more frequently affectionate and receive more comments on their appearance Is that what you were going for? Those shoulder pads make you look like B. Arthur! than female characters, although no significance was found for these characteristics. Regardless, this demonstrates male characters beginning to exhibit stereotypically feminine traits. Female characters, on the other hand, were more likely to be portrayed as intelligent, an uncommon conclusion in previous content analyses. But why do these results matter? The results of this study indicate a lack of female characters on the screen, consistent over time. According to cultivation theory, the lack of female representation can communicate messages to children about their roles in society. This representation speaks volumes about the perceived importance of women in the world, suggesting that women are less important because there are less women on screen. And the fact that this hasn't changed over time only shows how this idea is being continued in children's television. In 2019, many male stereotypes were perpetuated by children's television, as male characters were more aggressive, held leadership, and had more of a comic role than female characters. This image of what the male character should be can be highly influential to child viewers. In line with Gerbner's cultivation theory, this representation can teach children that only boys can be aggressive, funny, and leaders, while girls cannot. This can be particularly confining teaching children that it is unacceptable to behave or not behave a certain way. Consistent with Bandura's social learning theory, children can also emulate these representations, causing boys to exemplify male stereotypes like aggression and leadership, while girls believe they cannot. On the other hand, female characters were observed to be more likely to be portrayed as intelligent, showing a reversal of gender stereotypes. The continuation of these positive images can have healthy impacts on children's perception of gender roles and allow children to not be restricted to traditional gender stereotypes. This representation can permit children to adopt the values shown in this media to teach them that it is acceptable for women to be intelligent. And in terms of change over time, male characters became more affectionate and emotional in 2019 over 2015. This change of male characters taking on more stereotypically feminine traits can communicate positive ideas of gender roles to children. As cultivation theory suggests, viewing this phenomenon can communicate to viewers that it is acceptable for boys to take on stereotypically feminine behaviors, like affection and emotionality. This change suggests that networks are positively changing the way they portray gender, and that traditional gender stereotypes are being challenged in these children's shows. However, male characters also became increasingly more aggressive in 2019 over 2015, displaying that there continues to be a portrayal of stereotypically masculine traits as well. The fact that this stereotype has not changed, and has in fact increased in children's media, poses a threat to the way children view gender and gender roles. For female characters, significant changes were made over time as well. In 2019 over 2015, female characters became more brave and athletic. 
This change can have positive impacts on children's gender perception because it can communicate that it is acceptable for girls to exhibit stereotypically masculine traits such as braveness and athleticism. This study didn't come without faults. This study focused on gender representation as well as the change in representation over time, so the selection of shows had to fit the criteria of being on air since 2015. As a result, the sample of shows may not reflect the full extent of shows today because there are many that have been aired after 2015. And, as only four episodes were watched for each show, the selection may not reflect the entire show. Future research can include expanding the sample of shows in order to reach a broader conclusion, and examining the change over a greater period of time would allow for an exploration into how representation has changed in the long run. Future research could also include examining the representation of other gender identities. A gap identified in this research was that other gender identities, like non-binary or agender, were not explored or accounted for. Understanding the representation for different gender identities would further the understanding of gendered images and representation as well. So where do we go from here? Significant changes have been made for gender representation in children's shows. That's undeniable. Male characters are more affectionate and emotional, and female characters have become more brave and intelligent. But we can't ignore the fact that gender stereotypes are still present in the shows that kids watch. Males still take up an overwhelming majority of roles, and this hasn't changed over the years. And male characters are still a majority of the comic and authority roles, and are more aggressive than female characters. Not only does this mean that boys are being taught that they must be aggressive, funny, and leaders, but it communicates to girls that they cannot be these things. If television communicates to kids that this is how they should act based on their gender, then children will believe it. Networks, writers, and producers must work so that children don't have to conform to stereotypical gender ideas prescribed to them by the television they watch. And we must actively be aware that these portrayals have the potential to harm children's perception of gender. For children, there should be no limit to what they can do. But these portrayals silently limit how kids can act. If Superman can't cry, then how can the boys who watch him?